Hi, everyone. Nice to be here again. <laughs> uh, I've got something a little bit different for you all today. Um, it's one of maybe the first ever talks at a Nextflow Summit not to be directly about something Nextflow related. Uh, <laughs> there is, it does tie in, so, so bear with me. Um, I've got just a short talk today to kind of uh, go over MultiQC, which is one of these um, other tools I've had the pleasure of developing, um, and talk a little bit about some recent things that have come out in recent versions and some of the directions that we're now taking with MultiQC um, and what you can expect in the future. So um, for anyone in the audience or, or watching online who's not familiar with MultiQC, um, it's a generalized tool uh, for working with, with, it can be any kind of data, but um, historically mostly genomics data, DNA sequencing, um, and it, it's really good at aggregating uh, results across multiple samples and tools into a single report. So um, in kind of pictorial format, if you go to the MultiQC documentation, you'll see, see this diagram where you can imagine you've uh, run your Nextflow pipeline maybe if it's RNA-seq, it's got like 50 different bioinformatics tools that ran, and maybe you ran with 150 samples. And so then you have all these log outputs, which are all different f file formats. Um, some of them might be nice, well-formatted YAML or JSON files. Many of them will just be standard out with weird formatting, um, which are kind of designed for people to look at. But when you have thousands of them, it's not very practical. And MultiQC is really good at understanding, finding these files and understanding all these different formats and then summarizing that and distilling it, pulling out just the really important bits to show you in a nice HTML file, which uh, you can kind of scan through. And it's not going to go all the way into the depths of your detail analysis, but it, it will hopefully highlight any samples which might be problematic and give you a good feel for how, how your project went. I was explaining this to someone the other night, and uh, any Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fans will recognize this. I said it's a bit like a Babel fish. Yeah, you have this kind of mumble jumble of all these different languages from all these different bioinformatics tools coming in one end, and it, it spits out a nice standardized data files also for downstream analysis um, and, and a nice kind of understandable human readable report. So, multi-QC, you know, you know by now. I like, I like the numbers. <laughs> I like to give some context. Um, how many different tools? As, a, as, right, as of right now, there are 135 different bioinformatics tools which are um, officially supported. Uh, and that means you can just throw those files at multi-QC. Multi-QC, you just give it a directory to search through, and it will find those files and understand them and generate a report with them. There's probably many more unofficially because you can format your data in, in a way that MultiQC understands and it will, it will pull them in. And you can also have custom modules which you install and it ties into the MultiQC runtime. Uh, but these are the, the kind of core different tools which are supported by MultiQC and it's growing all the time. Um, been very fortunate that MultiQC is not a complicated tool. At the end of the day, it's mostly just a lot of regular expressions <laughs> and an HTML template. Um, but it, it hit a niche, and it's become very popular, uh, and which is lovely to see. Uh, it's also quite terrifying. <laughs> um, and uh, we hit, the ben uh, hit a, uh, a nice mark the other day where we went past a million downloads on, on, on the Python package index. Um, thank you. <laughs> And uh, of course, this doesn't take into consideration uh, Bioconda, which is still trying to figure out how to understand those numbers, <laughs> and uh, like Docker and everything else. So it's, it's a huge number of people using, using PyPI. And, and we also hit another uh, milestone, which was 1,000 stars on GitHub. So uh, thank you to everyone here who's hit that little star button. Show some love. Um, and just for some context, uh, someone runs MultiQC roughly once a second. No pressure. <laughs> so, so what's new? Um, the, the big news, uh, we put out a blog post about this uh, the other month, uh, is that it's no longer just me. <laughs> I mean, we've had a, a big community behind MultiQC. Most of those 135 modules were not written by me. They were contributed. But at the, the core tool of maintenance has always been me for the past eight years. Um, and, but I'm very happy that we managed to uh, hire the number two contributor, 
on the GitHub page. It was easy to find him. Um, uh, Vlad has joined Segura and is now working full time on more TQC with me, uh, which is brilliant to sort of share. Well, I say share. He's really now doing all the maintenance <laughs> um, and, and work on more TQC together. And I mean, it was, it was always going to be an obvious pick because Vlad's been working on multi QC for years, but really just to hammer at home, uh, after I spoke to him uh, in an interview, he put in a pull request for next week and managed to speed up the file search by 720%. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's pretty tough to beat that really. Um, so if you, if you pulled multi QC version, I think 115 or later, um, and especially if you have a lot of files to run on, multi QC is significantly faster. Um, so that, that, that's the kind of stuff we're starting to, to pull in now. Um, something else, I mean, I, I said now that MultiQC is very popular and it's, it's phenomenally well cited in the scientific literature. It has over, over 4,000 citations, uh, which is ridiculous. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it's kind of a fun, fun little hobby to kind of go through uh, and see all the different kinds of things that people are using MultiQC for, and it's such a wide range. You know, NASA running it on the International Space Station, and is of course involved in COVID, and involved in pretty much anything you can imagine. Really, it covers the full breadth of of, uh, of bioinformatics and beyond. And I always feel kind of a bit guilty because MultiQC is visible to the people running it. It sits at the end of the pipeline and it, it summarizes all these results from these amazing bioinformatics tools. Um, and I think probably people, people notice MultiQC because it's the thing they see and maybe don't always kind of see these amazing bioinformatics tools in the background which actually generated the data and did the hard work. Um, so something I did to MultiQC earlier this year is now all of the MultiQC modules, all 135 of them where possible, um, include a DOI in the, in the multi-QC code. Um, and so now in the multi-QC report, alongside those results, we, we include little hyperlinks DOI to the reference for that tool. Um, and multi-QC also generates a citations file every time you run it. So to hopefully encourage and kind of pass on the love to all the other scientists, many of you probably sat here, uh, doing the work that feeds into multi-QC. Um, Something else that is, is really important with reproducible research, of course, and something we've worked a lot with uh, in Nextflow and, and it, within the NF Core uh, community is reporting on the version of the software that is being run. And it's been sort of in the back of my head for, for years, actually. There's a, a stub pull request that was from, I think, 2016 from SciLife Lab that Ricard said, he started and said, I'm going on holiday for a couple of weeks. I'll put this here just in case anyone else wants to finish up and it's sat there ever since. <laughs> um, but it's sort of been in the back of my mind that, that the logs, many of the logs that are read by MultiQC include uh, version information. And so uh, Pontus Hoyer who put in a huge effort um, uh, from the community, which is amazing, uh, and has added support again to all 135 different modules where possible. Uh, and now all of the MultiQC modules where that information is available will pass it uh, add it into the report in a standardized format, and again, it will show up um, alongside, so it's really, really easy to know what ran in the analysis. Um, in multi-QC, sorry, in NF Core, we also like to group the version numbers by process. Um, so one process can have multiple tools, and also, a, in theory, a single tool can run multiple times with different versions. So we've also added support for, for grouping versions and, and producing these files. And there was quite a lot of work in the NF Core Hackathon earlier this week to uh, adopt this new format of version reporting so we can cut out a lot of the boilerplate code in, in uh, NF Core pipelines. So, little feature, but it's the little features that sort of add up over time. Okay, that was just a couple of highlights from kind of the last few months. What, what kind of stuff are we gonna start doing or, uh, now that we're, we're growing the multi-QC team and what can we look forward to? Probably the, the first thing we're focused on is uh, thinking about the multi-QC reports themselves, the, the front end, which has really been pretty much untouched in, in many years. Um, so I'm really, Vlad's making excellent progress on this already, uh, switching out the, the underlying plotting library, which we use, uh, to Plotly. And one of the great things for this is that this opens us up to having many more plot types. Um, people have been asking me for box plots for years, <laughs> and it uh, should now hopefully be possible, and, 
things like uh, clustered uh, dendrograms onto heat maps and lots of things like this. Plotly is a very expansive and powerful plotting library. Um, and the other thing is, uh, if you run MultiQC with really lots of samples and the HTML will be so big it would crash your browser, uh, MultiQC kind of automatically switches modes and creates a static PNG image. Um, and that's done with, with matplotlib at the moment. And every, for every plot in high charts, I've had to manually write the matplotlib code to try and make a plot that looks the same, uh, which is another reason I'm not keen to add lots of different plot types. <laughs> um, and Plotly's great because Plotly, you can just like say, flick a switch and it has all that built into a plotting library, so we don't have to do that anymore. So that will hopefully be coming soon to, to a new version of MultiQC. Um, along with that, that's gonna basically break a lot of stuff <laughs> in, the, in the template for MultiQC. So we're, we're gonna take that opportunity to have a, have a dig into HTML and see if we can implement a few features. Um, some of you will be pleased to know that uh, dark mode will hopefully be coming to MultiQC. Especially relevant at today's screen. <laughs> you no longer have to wear your sunglasses to see, to see MultiQC. Uh, so some little things like that will hopefully make it uh, a bit, a bit nicer to work with. Uh, anyone who frequents the, the MultiQC website might find that I really like dark mode. And a little, little, <laughs> little Easter egg tucked away in there if you, uh, if you click around enough times. <laughs> Triple click. Um, we're also gonna really get into the weeds with the core code and come back and look at how the original library was structured back in 2000 and whatever it was. Um, finish porting from Python 2 to 3 and all of the best practices that come with that. Things like code typing, I'm gonna start using um, MyPy. Um, better use of kind of objects and classes and, and really amazing libraries like Pydantic, uh, which have come out in recent years where, which allow us to do, have real richly structured data objects within the MultiQC runtime and, and we can leverage lots of things from this. Um, validation, and all kinds of things. And well, part of this is also gonna be <coughs> really useful for anyone running Python scripts and being able to use MultiQC not just as a command line tool but also as a Python library. So uh, Evan's wonderful demo of data studios with a, a Python notebook, but the hope is you'll be able to import MultiQC and then run some parsing, inject some custom stuff, tweak this, tweak that, have a specific plot. Uh, and really access all of the powerful functionality within the, py the Python code uh, used within MultiQC. So look forward to that soon. Um, and one of the reasons for using uh, Pydantic is we ho also hope to leverage some of the interoperability that that gives us with different file formats. Um, we want to, when you run MultiQC, it searches files, it passes all the data, and then it generates a report. And it kind of does that in a linear fashion. And we want to introduce a a standardized file format in between parsing and report generation. This will mean that if you've run MultiQC six times, you can go back to those intermediate files and generate a report that combines those reports, which people ask me for a lot and isn't possible currently. Um, it also means you should be able to do things like uh, have multi-CPU parallelization uh, and a bunch of other features. Uh, and by using standardized file formats like Apache Parquet, I hope many of you are kind of building custom solutions with data lakes and things like this, and it should, should really be able to kind of enrich the ecosystem that builds on top of the work that, that MultiQC is built, uh, doing. Okay, I've got a couple of minutes left. This is, this was like a nighttime bit of fun project, um, and I, I'm gonna, everyone else has been doing live demos, and I, I can't miss out, so I'm gonna try, <laughs> try a little live demo. Um, one of the technologies that's kind of been around just recently and has got a lot of hype is called WebAssembly. Uh, it's kind of like a, basically running a, a VM virtual machine inside your, your web browser. So you can all follow along with me if you like. Do this on your laptops or whatever at the same time. See if you can get it to work. MultiQC.info slash run. Now, uh, you can click down some example data just here or you can use some data you've got kicking around. Uh, just load that up. And then, uh, a little drag box. This only works on Chrome, basically, at the moment, and Opera, I think. Um, so there's room for improvement. I'm gonna drag these data files on there. And these have now been mounted into the WebAssembly um, VM, I'm gonna call it. It's not the, um, inside of the browser. And in fact, if I look at the, uh, the browser config console, you can see when the page loaded, 
It's a loaded uh, micro pip. So this is using, um, I've forgotten the name of it now, the Python WebAssembly uh, library. And it's installed micro pip and it's installed multi QC inside here. I don't have multi QC installed locally. This is not using my terminal or anything. This is just within the web browser. Um, and I've added my files and I'm going to click run. And uh, because it's too fun not to, I've made it look like I'm running it in a terminal, but it's not really. <laughs> uh, and then I can click open report. So, like I say, this is a bit of fun. Like, uh, this multi QC still lives at the end of pipelines. But, uh, but yeah, maybe there's some users out there who get emailed an email full of uh, fast QC reports. And now, now, if you're a bit one of these people who's like terrified of a terminal, now you can just load up a web page and click around. So, bit of fun. Um, I can resist. <laughs> That's it. Uh, short one today. Very cool demo. Um, and, and, and all the, the improvements. Um, it's been observed that uh, there's probably a lot of tips and tricks that live only in your head. Maybe lads now. Um, a lot of what? Uh, tips, tricks, specialized knowledge, mm. uh, edge cases, and all sorts of things like that. Um, I think the first recommendation, and you and Vlad don't get on a plane together. <laughs> the first one. Uh, the second one, there is a lot of demand, I think, for training about that sort of thing. Yeah. That we we do need to move on. We I'm, so, I'm sorry, we're out of time. But um, that was very cool. And uh, please get on Slack uh, because there are additional questions. Uh,